Come on, descendants of the slave trade. This is for you. This is for you only. Only. Just like everything else is just for you. We're back with another Bible study. Wake up, my people. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade. What we call African American before we were brought to this side of the world? Just a simple question. Just a simple question. And I'm going to show you how the prophecies that must have, that has been fulfilled in the Bible lines up with why we are calling ourselves African American, descendant of the slave trade. We're wise enough to know that we were not called African American before they loaded us on the ships and brought us over here to be slaves, to become slaves, excuse me. Um, let's get it. Um, Romans 3 and 4. Let's get it. Romans 3 and 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that they as mayest be justified in thy saying, and mayest overcome without a judge. So, you know, we're going to use the scriptures. We're going to use the scriptures. How can a nation change their nationality? How can a nation change their nationality? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. You think the Most High didn't foretell, didn't foretell of us losing our nationality? Let's see. Let's see why we call ourselves at the two continent that was also named after two Caucasian males. Let's see, beautiful so-called black man, black woman. And we're gonna be reading um, Deuteronomy 15, I mean 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thee God, to exert to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So Moses told the children of Israel, after he took them out of Egypt, that if they didn't keep all the law, statutes, and commandments that was given upon us, that we will Let's see what will happen. I'm going to read 15 again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken, and we don't listen to Moses, unto the voice of the Lord thee God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Let's see what 68 got to say. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Let's see what it said. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I have spoken unto thee. And thou shalt see it no more again. We ain't seen our homeland since. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. 
you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall redeem us. And we were sold to who? Our enemy. Our enemy. We were sold to our enemy. I mean, it don't get any clearer than that. Who them people to us? Our enemy. That's our enemies. We were sold to our enemy. So once we became the bond men and bond women, our enemies were very crafty and made sure they helped to make sure this prophecy was fulfilled. We're going to go to Jeremiah 17 and 14. Let's see what our enemies, they were very crafty. Let's see what they helped. And, you know, the prophecy that the Most High had put in place. Let's see what they helped fulfill. Jeremiah 17 and 4. Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thou self, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve the enemy in the land which thou knowest not. For you have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever. Our foreparents hated the Most High's laws. That's correct. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. They hated it in the same way the descendants of the slave trade right now hate the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments. Even hate the thought that he has laws, statutes, and commandments because they trust their pastor to say that you don't have to keep any of them and have not even tried to learn the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments. Now let's see what does the Most High say have more understanding than we do, so-called African American. Now let's see what he says have what animal he says have more understanding than we do. He compared us to two simple animals, Isaiah. One and three. Watch what he say it has more common sense than so-called African American descendants of the slave trade. Isaiah one and three. The ox know his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people does not consider. We don't even consider. We don't even consider that we cannot be African-American, descendants of the slave trade. It's impossible for us to be African-American. Name one other nation on the planet that their nationality is known by two continents that actually was not the, man, come on. Man. What's crazy is no matter what happened, the Most High has still chose us to be his people. So we are going to go into the last book of the Bible to show you that the kingdom is only for the descendants of the slave trade, which are the children of Israel. Revelations 21, the last book of the Bible. Revelations 21, we'll start 11 through 14. It's time to wake up, Israel. The sinners of the slave trade. It's time to come back to our God. Revelations 21 and 11. Because he, he gave, he's preparing the kingdom for us. Let's get our name in the book for him. Let's, let's serve him. I mean, let's, hey, look, there's a lot of us out here that need to know that we are the children of Israel. It's time to wake the world up, man. We ain't got much long. We're seeing these banks collapsing. We're seeing the rumors of wars going on. We're seeing nations coming against nations. Nations joining with each other. 
I mean, wake up. I mean, I, I'm pleased with it. I'm pleased with what's happening because it just shows that we are that much closer to the most high coming back and taking control of the planet. So, hey, I'm, I'm happy with it. I just want other people to, you know, be prepared to see the things that are about to happen. We're seeing floods. We're seeing earthquakes. We're seeing, man, snowstorms. <clears throat> All right, let's get it. Revelation 21, 11. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Oh, this thing is going to be beautiful. The kingdom is going to be beautiful. Revelations 21 and 12. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. Yes, 12 gates into the kingdom. And at the gates, 12 angels and they will be guarded by the Most High's angels. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So if your pastor is not teaching you that heaven, the kingdom, the new Jerusalem belong to the children of Israel, you need to stop giving him your money and get away from him. He is the devil. Revelations 21 and 13, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. Revelations 21 and 14, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Yeah, the disciples that walk with our Messiah, they will have their name, proper names, not these names, you know, this, this, this English language that we're learning or wherever you at. You know, we will get our tongue back. We will have more understanding of who we truly are once again. Our heritage will come back. To the descendants of the slave trade, we are the Israelites. We are still living in the land that our ancestors became slaves. Wow. Deuteronomy 28, a great place to start reading. Shalom. Yes. 
Tyrannical, dogmatic indoctrinations Ruling ecclesiastical gathers by imagination They don't know y'all, but yet they claim they have a conversation Afraid of the real truth, so they contemplating Conspiring with one another, seeking conversation Changing the Sabbaths and the laws and bringing condemnation They celebrate an abomination, so they are mistaken They know respectful instructions is what they demonstrate And God's patiently waiting, making the first of the nations Not trying to find our salvation, this prayer will become a nation and the nation will serve the same people they hate and the same people they kick, not in the same. Young and old, they treated us all the same. All the, same. the word says that they hated us for his name. For his name. They ain't accepting he came in his father's name. Father's name. It's all good because he's still your show with a cave. This is for all my people. Who can ride this? Slip and make me a slave for riding. Not for provision, yes, survival. It's all for God now. It's all for God. This is for all my people. Who can ride this? Slip and make me a slave for riding. Not for provision, yes, we're going to be reading Matthew 26, 7 through 13. Matthew 26 and 7. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye this woman? For she has wrath a good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she has did it for my burial. Very I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, thou shalt also this that this woman have done be told for a memorial of her. All praises, glory, and honor to our God and his only begotten son and this woman. All praises for her preparing our Messiah for his burial and not worrying about the cost of the ointment understanding what she was doing. All praises, all praises, all praises. Hallelujah. <laughs> 